Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli here. Welcome to a brand new edition of In The Shop, and I've got a good one for you today. Before we get into it, subscribe to my channel. If you're not already subscribed, hit that button real quick. We're gonna get you great educational fishing content every single week. But let's get to it. In today's shop, we're gonna be talking about how to snap a tube. How to use a technique with this tube jig called snapping a tube. Um, you know, it's funny, with some of these techniques, they're not new, they're actually old techniques that come back around. And this particular one, I remembered again by fishing with Mark Zona. We filmed the show with Z in the fall, and literally he kicked my butt using this technique. While I was in the back fishing wacky rigs and drop shots and Ned rigs, he was out fishing me two to one with this technique. So it's so cool to see an old technique come back around, but this one's called snapping a tube. Also, people also call it cracking a tube. We're gonna talk about the whole thing today. Let's start with how to rig this thing. Let's start with the tube, the jig head, and then we'll get to the technique. Um, for tubes, you basically want a tube that's anywhere from, you know, three inches to four and a half inches long. Um, I love the Berkley power tubes. They're amazing. There's a Berkley Maxent tube that's also really good. Uh, but the three and a half to four and a half, both sizes work. My rule of thumb is I try to match the size of the forage to the size of the tube. So when you have smaller crayfish, Smaller minnows, smaller owlwife, smaller shiners, more like that three, three and a half. If you get into a fishery where they're eating little perch or bigger gobies or bigger crawfish, you're four inch, you're four and a half, four and three quarter, right? So use the size of the forage to pick which size tube you're gonna use. Um, you know, a tube jig, it's pretty simple bait. It's a soft plastic. It's got a skirted tentacle section in the back. And this bait, a tube, is hollow throughout the core. Some of them, like this power tube, just about a little tiny sliver of the tip is solid, but most of the tube is hollow inside. And we're going to utilize a jig head to rig this tube when we're snapping or cracking. Um, a lot of good jig heads on the market. I want you to pick a, a jig head, a tube head, that has a 60 or a 90 degree line tie, especially the 90s, I really like a lot. This is a VMC tube jig head. Um, the other thing with these tube jig heads, for this tube technique, we're gonna use a heavier jig head, okay? Listen to me, hear me out on this. When we're slowly dragging a tube on the bottom, finesse style, Typically lighter heads are better. But for this technique, for snapping or cracking, and you're gonna see it in a second, we want a heavier head. So I like from a quarter ounce all the way up to a three quarter ounce. But my two favorite sizes for this snapping technique, for a tube jig head, my two favorite sizes are three eighths and half ounce. And you're gonna see as we talk about how to fish it, you're gonna see why the heavier tube heads come into play. Okay, so here we got a 3 8 ounce. So I take my head, I wet it, you can dip it in the water, and we're just gonna insert it in that tube body. Okay, remember, it's hollow, so we're gonna moist, get that head moist, and we're just gonna literally slip it inside of that tube. Look at this, it's so easy. We're just gonna slip it inside the tube, and when we stop, when we get to the head, we're gonna just push that eyelet out with our fingers. Look at that, okay? See that eyelet that popped out? So we're sliding the head in, pushing the eyelet out. All right, now here's a little trick though, I wanna tell you, when you're rigging it. The closer you are 
to the nose of that bait with the eyelet, right? So if we push that head here, I'm gonna show it to you again, right? Look, head, wet it, insert it in the hollow part. The further we push it to the front, pop it out, the tighter that spiral is gonna be on the fall. The further back we push it out, so I can just literally pull it back out of the body. If I come down a quarter of an inch and pop it out, see, there's a little, about a quarter of an inch ahead there, that spiral is going to get wider. We can even pull it back a half inch and it gets super wide. But typically, I'll fish it from the nose back maybe a quarter of an inch, pop it out. And the rule of thumb on when to change from it all the way up to a quarter inch back is the colder the water, the tighter the spiral. So you want it all the way to the nose. As the water warms, you get to summertime, the water's warm, I want more spiral, so I want that eyelet further back, okay? So there's our rig. And then we're gonna tie it on a spinning rod and reel, okay? This snapping this tube, even though these head sizes are three eighths and half ounce, and we got a big heavy duty hook here, this is a system that you want to fish on a spinning rod. It's a preferred system on a spinning rod. And we're going to use a shorter, heavier spinning rod than we would, than we would for a lot of fishing techniques. I want you to use a six and a half to seven foot medium to medium heavy rod for this technique, right? It's a finesse technique. We're going to snap it. But we have to drive that bigger hook home. And because of that, that heavier action, a medium or medium heavy, is better than a medium light or light. So we want some backbone to that rod, right? A medium heavy. This is the 6'6 medium heavy. Uh, this is an Abu Garcia Ike rod. That's a 70-30 rod. Only about 30% of that rod is tip. We want that. And about 70% of it is backbone, right? So medium, medium heavy, six, six to seven foot rod is, is the perfect length. A 20 or 30 size spinning reel with a braid to flora leader. You know, that braid's gonna help us make really long cast. It's gonna help us have instant response when we snap. Instant hookup when we set the hook, but I do want a fluorocarbon leader there. My rule on length of that leader is the dirtier the water, the shorter that leader can be. If it's dirty water, stained water, and we're snapping a tube, you need a leader that's a foot to two foot long. As the water gets cleaner, I want a little bit longer leader, two to three feet long, okay? So little length of fluorocarbon leader. And for the braid, I like 10, 12 pound braid, 10 pounds great. And for my leader, I like eight or 10 pound fluorocarbon. All right, let's get to the action because snapping a tube, uh, cracking a tube, as Zona says, it's all about creating a reaction. And basically what this bait's gonna do is we want this bait, remember, heavier tube head, quarter to three quarter, the three eighths and a half, as this thing's falling, it's gonna be spiraling down on the fall, but fast, Shh, boom, it hits the bottom. And this is where the name comes in, right? Snapping or cracking. We're gonna, we're gonna snap our, our tip. And when we do that, it jumps off the bottom erratically. And then we're gonna throw a pause into it and bow to it, throw slack in the line. And when we do that, guess what guys? Spirals back to the bottom, boom, hits the bottom. And when that thing hits the bottom, I wanna snap it up erratically, doo -doo -doo -doo. and when I throw slack into it, it's gonna spiral back to the bottom. Such a key motion of this tube is that erratic, doo -doo -doo -doo, and then that pause where it spirals back down. So I wanna show it to you um, with my tip here, just to give you an idea of my rod positioning. And when that tube hits the bottom on the initial cast, 
I'm letting that tube jig fall on a semi-slack line, a controlled slack line. As that tube's falling, I use my body and my rod to maintain that slack in the line. Once that tube hits on the initial cast, your line's gonna bellow out. You know you're on the bottom. Once you're on the bottom, I'm gonna get my rod from way down here. Look at my rod tip. I'm down almost at three o'clock. I'm about 2.30, between two and three o'clock. And I'm gonna start my snapping, which looks like this. I'm gonna go from that two, three o'clock up to 12, but as I go up, I'm tipping it up the whole time. I'm snapping it, right? Like that. Two or three snaps, and when I get to 12, this is a key part of it now, watch. When I get up to 12, I'm gonna follow it back down, use my body and my rod to put slack in the line. These are key elements because I want that tube erratically snapping. Tick, 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 tick. And when I throw slack into it, it's going to enable that tube to spiral down. Listen to me. Snapping a tube is all about a total reaction strike. So the heavier weight along with that spiraling and that snapping, that's what's going to trigger these fish to bite. Here's the other thing I wanted to mention. When you talk about snapping a tube, People always assume it's only for smallmouth. Listen to me, if you're watching this, this is great for smallmouth, for spotted bass, for largemouth, all species of bass. This is a sleeper technique. Okay, we talked about the bait, the tube head, how to rig it, how to fish it. I wanna give you one last tip that is a sleeper little secret trick for when they are not eating this thing good. You're gonna have days where when you're snapping the tube, dude, they're gobbling it up and you hardly miss any. But because this is a reaction bite, especially on that fall, right? You snap it, two, 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 it erratically pops up and it spirals back down really quick. And a lot of times fish just react on it. They're not even hungry but they go up and sort of headbutt the lure or they breathe on it or hit it with their side. And if you start missing fish, if you start missing bites, snap at a tube, we could add a stinger to this bait that will not affect the action whatsoever. And I've got one rigged up here just so you can see what I'm saying. When I hold this tube up, you don't even know it's there, but let me, Real quick, let me turn the tube around, pull those tentacles back and show you what I did. Look at that treble hook stinger that I added on the back of that tube, okay? I'm gonna pull it out here and show you. This is a really easy, quick thing you could, modification you could tie up. And here it goes. Basically all we're, we're doing is we're taking our tube head we're adding a short little length of 20 or 30 pound braid to a number five or a number six treble hook. That's it. And you can pre-tie these things. You could have them ready. And when you rig your tube, it doesn't impede at all on the way you rig your tube. We're gonna do the same thing. Wet the tube, push it in the body of the tube, Push our eyelet out, depending on where we want it. And when you allow that free swinging treble hook, it just hides in the tentacles. When those fish are short striking and head butting, this is a modification you wanna make. Real quick tip, when you're tying this, be sure, I'm gonna show you real quick. I won't tie the whole thing, but I'll show you real quick. Be sure that when you get your leader of your 20 or 30 pound braid, I want you to tie the knot on the treble hook first, okay? So just do, we're gonna do a normal uh, polymer knot on that treble, right? Just gonna make a loop through the eye, make an overhand knot. We're gonna pull the treble through that knot, wet it, cinch it down. All right, so now we have our treble hook tied first. 
You just trim off that little end there. And then tie it on your tube second. And that gives us the ability as we tie it to alter the length of that leader depending on what size tube you're using. From a three inch that would be about that close all the way to a four and a half that would be about there. So tie the treble on first, then tie it onto the tube just by going through the eye of the tube. Remember, this is all being done before we even have the tube involved, right? So I can just do the same thing, a polymer knot. I'm going to go through the eyelet of the tube. There's my big overhand knot. And then before we cinch that down and pull it through, look at this. Look at that, ready? I can control that distance. That's the perfect distance for about a three and a half inch tube. I go through. I bring the tube and the treble hook through that loop, cinch down, wet it. Here's my excess. We're going to get that. And that knot is just going to stay on the eye. It's not going to affect the way we tie the bait. And there's my little treble hook stinger on my tube jig. Man, snapping a tube, cracking a tube, it's an old technique, but it's definitely a technique that still works and will create a reaction strike. Large mouth, small mouth spots, doesn't matter. Try this cracking, snapping a tube, try this technique, you're gonna catch more fish. Man, I hope you enjoyed this in the shop. Uh, if you did, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button down there. We got great informational content coming to you every single week. If you're already subscribed to my channel, tell a buddy about Mike Iaconelli Fishing on YouTube. We're here to teach you some new tricks. Bye everybody.